I've looked at a bunch of Vim like web browsers on this channel and while they will have their own I guess unique take on how to take the Vim style of interaction and apply it to web browsing one thing I always take away from those videos is they always have something that is a little scuffed about them. And usually it's one thing in common. That is mouse support. What I mean by this is while you can click stuff and do the basics, absolute basics with a mouse, having things like proper context menus and the stuff you expect to be there inside of a web browser. Now, I fully understand that if you're using a Vim-inspired web browser, you're probably going to be using your keyboard more often than not. But there are some websites out there where interacting with them like that just is not a good experience. And having that proper mouse support is always nice to see. Today, we're looking at Veeb or Vibe. I'm not really sure how to say the name. I'm going to go with Vibe, though, because usually VI is referred to as Vi, so stick an EB on the end. Vibe just makes sense. Don't confuse this with VimB, though. VimB is another Vim-inspired web browser, but that one is based on WebKit GTK. This one is based on Electron, effectively making it a Chromium browser. And being effectively a Chromium browser, all of the stuff you'd expect to be there is there. So mouse support works exactly as it should. We have context menus. While they have been styled differently, the context menus work exactly as they should. We have access to dev tools. So if I go inspect, as you can see, there are the Chromium dev tools. While extensions don't work here, you still have that basic stuff to give you a functional web experience. Being a Vim-inspired browser, the first thing you'd expect to be there after obviously the Vim-inspired movement, which works exactly as you expect it to, is probably going to be something like splits. And these have the exact same bindings that exist over in Vim. So if I go and do a control W, control V, as we can see, that's gone and opened up a vertical split. If we then do a control W, control S, it's going to split that one into a horizontal split. Now there's also a command mode as well. So if instead of running the hotkey, you'd much rather write out, say, V split. If we go and press colon, write out V split, that works as you'd expect it to. Now, one really nice thing this does have is when you're focused on a split, it is going to be highlighted. By default, that highlight is going to be orange, but that can be customized. And while that is highlighted, it's also going to be highlighted up in the tab bar as well. The split navigation, you can go and click on a split, both in the split window and also in the tab bar as well, but that's probably not your intention. Instead of doing that, how about we go and do a control W and then the direction we want to go. So control W, H, control W, K, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to closing a split, there's two main ways we can do this. Firstly, we can go and use the close command. And if we don't pass in a value to this, it's going to close the one that we're currently on. But as you might see, we can actually pass in a number as well and close any of the splits that we currently have open. So let's go and close, for example, the help split. And as we can see, that one is now gone. Now, there's also a key binding for this as well. That one is set to D, which might seem a little bit weird coming from something like Vim, but I guess this is sort of an adaptation of something like DD. It doesn't make perfect sense, but I think it certainly fits in a browser. Like any Vim-inspired tool, there is a bunch of different modes. So far, I've only seen normal mode and command mode. Both these operate basically the same way they do inside of Vim. Command mode is where you go and run commands. It has tab completion and all of that stuff you'd expect to be there. As for normal mode, this is basically the default mode where you can do things like move around, and because this is a web browser, it also has things like jumping through history as well. So let's go to, I don't know, this right here, and then let's make a search, and we'll make a, another search. So if you want to go back through history, this can be done by pressing capital H, and if you want to go forward in history, we can do capital L. We can also go and cycle through tabs. Right now, we only have splits, but... This basically works the same way. We can press capital J and capital K to do that as well. That's not going to take into consideration where they are located. All it's going to do is take into consideration the order of the tabs. To make the browsing experience make more sense, this actually adds in a bunch of extra modes. One of those modes being explore mode. Basically what this is, is it's going to jump you up to like your URL bar. And then this is where you can go and search for stuff. Now you might be wondering, 
Why does that even need to be a mode? Why can't it just jump you up there and then use insert mode, for example? Well, the reason why it's like that is because if you have things like this separated out into separate modes, then you can have dedicated key bindings just for doing that one action. Basically, custom bindings just for this subset of insert mode. If you want to get into explore mode, we can go and do so by pressing E or by just clicking up on the URL bar. Both those will do the exact same thing. But there are other ways to do so as well. Instead of replacing what's in the current tab, maybe you want to go and make a whole new tab. If we go and press capital E, that is going to go and do that, and also stick us straight into explore mode. Now, one thing you might have noticed about the way that tabs work is they don't work the same way they do inside of Vim. Even though I just made a whole new tab, it didn't replace the splits that already exist. Instead, what it did is replace the split that we currently had open. Now, I'm not exactly a big fan of this behavior. I would much rather have it work the same way it does in Vim. I can understand why you might like this. It does keep the same layout you already had, but it does give you, I think, a lot less freedom in what you can actually do. I didn't mention this before, but if you want to be dropped into a new tab without being put into explore mode, just go and press T instead of capital E. Like any of the browsers like Qt, Surf, or any of the Vim browser plugins, there is also a way to click links without actually having to use your mouse. If we go and press F, this is going to take us into follow mode. Now, one thing this does really, really well is it actually highlights different elements in different colors. Anything green is going to be a text input, anything red is going to be a clickable button, anything blue is an anchor tag, and then as you may guess, anything yellow is going to be any sort of element that has a clickable event handler attached to it. Now, you might also see grey from time to time. Grey is basically anything else that happens to be clickable. So if you want to go and open up this Wikipedia page down here, if I press D and then once we press that, it will then go and filter everything that doesn't have a D at the start out. Then we press I, it'll go and open that up. Likewise, if you start this by pressing capital F instead of lowercase f, this will open something up in a new tab. So say if we press R, now we're on a new tab. Now, if you genuinely hate the idea of using a mouse, there is a built-in way that we can avoid this. So pressing V doesn't take us into visual mode, it instead takes us into pointer mode. And pointer mode basically lets you do everything that you could normally do with your mouse. Not well, but you certainly can do it. Now, one interesting thing about this is it actually operates on a grid rather than by pixels like you might expect, which does make it kind of not exact, but it makes it much, much quicker to move and makes it feel like you're actually moving around inside of Vim. So if we go and press V again, that's actually going to take us into visual mode. And from here, we can actually go and highlight something. Let's say this bit of text right here. We could then say, for example, copy that by pressing Y. And let's say we want to go over here, you know, paste the text. And wow, it's the text we've just copied. And there's way, way more that you can do with pointer mode. That's just scratching the surface. Maybe you were able to guess by how many modes we've seen so far, but if you go and press slash, it's not just going to do a search, it's also going to put you into search mode. However, if you don't set any of your own custom key bindings, basically it works the same way as search does inside of Vim. So let's search for something like, I don't know, SA. And then if I go and press N, it is going to go and jump between those capital N is going to go in the other direction, works as you'd expect. If you ever forget anything and you want to check the documentation, pressing the F1 key or running the help command is going to take you back to that home screen we saw at the beginning. Now, this has a lot of documentation in it, not as much as something like Vim, but I didn't go over everything this application can do because that would take me... Um, quite a while <laughs> like this application can do a lot you can configure everything in it and the configuration as you may expect is done basically the same way it's done inside of vim now if you're really lazy and you don't feel like configuring anything or maybe you want an example of like what a full config file would actually look like the devs provide something really really useful so if you want to make vim act like say i don't know Vimium or Vim Vixen or Surfing Keys or Cute Browser, they actually provide complete config files that do exactly that. So let's go and download the one for, say, Vimium. 
if we go into our config directory and then into the Veeb folder, Veeb does need to spell it with a capital, but it will make this folder for you. And basically just dump this file in here. Also go and change the name from vimium.vbrc to just vbrc with no dot on it. And if we go and do that and then restart the browser, now it's going to be using that config file. As we can see, it's going to go and try to update everything. And we're good to go. Having a little look at that file, you can see that the way you configure this, yeah, is exactly the same way as Vim. Sure, the things you're setting are going to be obviously different, but the format that you need to use is going to be exactly the same. Even when it comes to doing things like key remapping, for example, this is absolutely identical. One thing I also didn't mention earlier is there is also a built-in ad blocker. I don't know how well it works. I haven't done extensive testing on it, but from the brief testing, it seems like it's functional. And honestly, having an option there for one is better than no option at all. Honestly, trying to work out exactly what I wanted to talk about in this video was kind of challenging. I could spend an entire video just talking about like the different commands that you can run. But I hope I did a good enough overview that gave you an idea of what this application can actually do. And if you want to properly explore it for yourself, I really, really recommend doing so. I know there are amazing plugins you can use to turn your existing browser into a Vim-like experience. But if you want an entire browser built from the ground up to be like that, I think this might be one of the better options out of the box. Obviously, things like Shoot and Surf have way, way more room and a lot more support for configuration. But if you want something that just does everything really well straight away, I would definitely give this one a look. That's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave and pay, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And then this channel is also available over on Odyssey. This video took a while to record. I, I, I spoke for too long yesterday, apparently. I did like seven hours of recording. So hopefully it turned out well in the end. <laughs> but that's going to be it for me. And I'm out.